Welcome back, guys, to another edition of the Go Earn It podcast. And today, I have the chance to sit down and talk to UFC fighter Mike Santiago. How you doing, Mike? I'm great, man. Thanks for having me on. Uh, thanks for being on. We appreciate the time. For listeners that don't know who Mike Santiago is, Mike, you want to give the listeners a little insight before we get in-depth about your career with MMA and whatnot. Tell the listeners who you are, where you're from, uh, just a little five-minute five background on who Mike is. Um. Man, this is me, man, Mike Santiago. Right now, I'm a UFC featherweight, uh, fairly new to the UFC, mm -hmm. fighting for about 10 years, I believe. Yeah. Just years I got all together, MMA, boxing, kickboxing, probably about a little over 50 fights. Um, I'm right here from outside Chicago. I live in Oak Park now. Yeah. My girl. And... Um, I grew up in Franklin Park. I've wrestled my whole life. Just been an athlete my whole life. Awesome. So that's where we're going to get started with this Go Earn It podcast. Once again, Mike, thank you for being on today. Um, let's start from the beginning. Um, where So where did uh, the aspiration to start wrestling come from? Because a big, a big foundation of who you are, not only as a fighter, but as a person, has been from wrestling. So let's hear about how you came up in, in life with the sport of wrestling. Well, my first, my three main sports growing up, like I started at five years old. My grandpa had me like, you know, hey, all right, let's see. Every season there was something. It was football, baseball, wrestling. Those, yeah. were, my, those were my three main. And uh, first, you know, football was actually my first favorite sport. Yeah. To be honest, it was my Same. First. Me, me too. Yeah. I loved it, man. And I loved baseball. I loved wrestling. And I don't know. There was just something about football that I was just – all about man and you know i'm not i'm not the biggest guy you know so right so football in the future for me at a young age wouldn't have been you know wouldn't have panned out very exactly. very far so, yeah and uh so when i got to high school i did wrestling just for all those four years yeah non wrestled in season off season just non-stop wrestling right um yeah so my grandfather he was a big part of that him and my uh and my uncle his son um, mm -hmm. had a big part of me joining wrestling, and I would go to his high school meets when I was, you know, little, just to watch. And yeah, grandpa be video recording, and yeah, I mean, it was it was inevitable for me to be a wrestler. So when when did you officially start? Do you remember what age, what time, like what uh, I what think first time frame? Grade, I had my first like wrestling tournament. I was active at five years old. Yeah, but I think six years old is when I really started to compete. Okay. And yeah. growing up into wrestling, um, was it always just, you know, I'm going to take this as far as possible? Or was it year by year, you know, as you got better, as you progress, it was kind of that route you were taking with wrestling? Because sometimes people get grandfathered in, basically, to start wrestling when they're in diapers. And then sometimes that story doesn't pan out, whether it's they burn out or they stop wrestling because of other reasons. What was that for you, like, going growing up, going into high school? What was what was the mindset and route you were taking? I wanted to go. I wanted to go as far as I could with my wrestling. Yeah, you know, and even before fighting, I didn't even know about fighting till like you know my sophomore year. Yeah, pretty much. and yeah, man, I I wanted I wanted everything to do with wrestling. Go to college, you know, maybe the world team, maybe Olympics, just something to do with wrestling. I, I just wanted it to be everything in my life, you know. Yeah. So when you got into college, where'd you go to high school? I mean, I'm uh, sorry, where'd you go when you got into high school? Where 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 were you at? Where did you compete in uh, high school? I went to Jacobs High School. It's out in Algonquin. Yep. I, I moved away from Franklin Park. Um, I would have went to East Leiden High School. Okay. Like all our feeder programs, that's where I was. East yeah. Leiden High School, football, wrestling, everything. Yeah, I would have went to uh, Proviso West if I didn't move out of Hillside. And I ended up moving out to Marengo. So Jacobs, oh, nice. Jacobs not too far from Marengo. I know I'm familiar with that program and everything. So we actually do uh, apparel for them. So Awesome. Yeah. So how did uh, how did high school wrestling and and I'm just trying to give listeners context just the the build up to what you're doing now so I hope you don't mind us getting a little bit more in depth about your story with wrestling because I mean it's an important aspect that every fighter needs to understand in this sport especially when you're a UFC 
professional fighter, you know? So yeah. in high school, how was that experience for you? Um, not, not more or less what you did. Did you place? What did, what did you take? But how was that experience competing all four years? And what did you take away from going through those years of high school wrestling? It was great, man. Um, I wrestled like a lot, like a lot of wrestling in high school. That was, I never, I didn't even think guys did that much wrestling. Yeah. It, it was crazy. Like every weekend, there was some weekends where I was doing two tournaments a weekend. Yeah. Me and my uncle would just go, he's like, Hey, uh, I got a list of all the tournaments here in Illinois, some, you know, in Michigan, you yeah. know, folk style national tournaments. He's like, let's just get you just the mat time. That's all you need. Mat time, mat time, mat time. I did like one camp, I think my whole career. And mm-hmm. it was just a, a perler takedown uh, wrestling camp. Yeah. Yeah, it was like my freshman year, and then after that, it was just wrestle, wrestle, wrestle. Now, did you find uh, more of a benefit going that route versus the camps? I mean, everybody's going to be different in hindsight and have their own way of growing into a sport. Did you feel that that was the best way for you? Yeah, yeah, I I, I believe so, man, because I think that goes for everything. The more you do something, that thing, yeah. I think the better you're going to get at it, you know? Right. The most, the more live matches I did, the more that I just got used to, just to being out there. You know, it, it was like my home, kind of. Sure, yeah. So, uh, your last year in high school, how did that pan out for you, wrestling wise? And what was the, what was the turning point? Thinking, you know what, I might take my route to go compete in college. What was that? What was that like for you? So my junior year, I wrestled one forty-five, and. Now I fight 145. Yeah, I, I qualified for state my junior year. Yeah, I went I went one and one uh-huh. down state, and the guy that I lost to, he had lost, so it was like a sure. A limit. Yeah, you so, get knocked out. Yeah, and uh, my senior year, I didn't want to cut any weight. You know, I just wanted to be natural. Yeah. I was about I was about 165, and just so five pounds wasn't too much. I wrestled at 160, mm-hmm. and. Uh, I didn't qualify for state, but I had I had a solid record. Sure, like yeah. Thirty nine and four mm-hmm. going into like the sectional meet, and I just placed uh, placed fourth. Okay, you know, one match away. That would have taken you to state this time this year, you know. Yeah, I know. They, all the rule changes because we're not too far in age. I graduated in eleven, and I think the following year they established that fourth place gets you to state. So I was like, man, I could have went to state a couple of times, you know, but you know, in hindsight, you look back and you got to just appreciate your career for what it was. So as you, uh, when you graduated from Jacobs, what was the next step? What were you thinking? And what was the route you take? What what were you going for? So I, I saw the ultimate fighter. That's, that's kind of when it started when I was in high school. Yeah. Ultimate fighter. And I started seeing fights and stuff. Do you remember like, what, uh, season or specifically like what, uh, when you started like getting into it or was it just it, everything? I, I think I watched the first season, the first season. Yeah. I think I started from the first season. You yeah. Know? Like Diego Sanchez and Forrest Griffin mm-hmm. and all those guys, you know, it was, yeah. it was cool. It was cool for it to see, you know, and it's like any other co- or high school kid. I would, you know, I got in a couple of fights. It was nothing. <laughs> yeah. You know, just, you know, a couple of scuffles, nothing. Right. You know, and I was a little, I was a smaller guy in high school. I wasn't, I wasn't too big. And, and there was one kid, actually, he's on a local circuit. His name's Joey Deal. Yep, he, I uh, know Joey. He, yep. Yeah, he just uh, won his belt for fighting. He was training at this gym out there, uh, Kern's Martial Arts at the time. Yep. He still trained there. And, uh. And we would all he would always just end up me and him would always just end up rolling like in the wrestling room before sure. after practice before even wrestling matches you know yeah and I really started to really like it you know I was like man this is this is awesome but I never went to Kearns you know I I know it was expensive at the time I was high school was, you know I just couldn't find the time so me and my friends were kind of I had a wrestling mat in my house and in my garage me and my boys would just mess around in there with sure. MMA gloves and just basically take take each other down and you know a little back like, backyard yeah. round and pound yeah yeah pretty much just me and a couple of my homies man nothing too crazy yeah and i actually dropped out my senior year um right after my wrestling season you know i was like you know i'm gonna finish off this year i wasn't gonna graduate on time right and have credit hours and uh, i was like you know what i'm just gonna finish out the wrestling season and just you know go figure back it and, out but, yeah i go back to where i grew up yeah and, and i got my gd and then uh I found pretty much the closest gym to me 
at that time was a gym called Revolution, mm-hmm. five or six miles away from my grandparents' house I was staying with at the time. And that's where it all started, man. Yeah. A couple so, months later, it was on. Right. So yeah. let, let me... Uh, let me get a little bit of insight as to how you were feeling that first year after being done with, you know, going through high school. Um, what was, was it always, all right, Mike, we're going to start training MMA or were you just kind of dabbling into it and realizing that, Hey, I can make a career out of this. If I just bust my ass, when, when did that finally click with you that, Hey, I got a, I got a good chance at doing something with this. It was really after, my first week of training, I yeah. was like, man, this work ethic is just intense and it's crazy. And the guy that I was doing, we just did like sh- the first week, it was all like just conditioning stuff. Like, let's see how much gas you got. Right. You know, like, all right, cool. You know, I know I can, I know I can, you know, handle some of this, but I was, I was so wrong. I, he had, he had me doing stuff I was never doing before, you know, I was like, man, I just wrestled. I didn't do all this crazy weights <laughs> and pull ups and, and nothing, you know, crazy. Yeah. He's like, it's all right, man. Just you know, let's get through this week and tell me how you feel. And then after that first week, I was like, I feel great, man. Like, you know, start teaching me other things, you know, right. kickboxing, boxing. I wanted to, I wanted everything to do with it, man. And me and my boy started training together. Uh, PJ Kahigas, he actually just had a Bellator fight. As yeah, well. shout out to PJ. He, uh, we hooked him up with a fight hat uh, for his walkout and weigh-ins. Uh, he didn't get the W, but I, I'm sure he's gonna have a good career as oh, he yeah. as he keeps working towards something, you know. Yeah, man, for sure. So uh, you get that first year out of the way. You start training. Now, when does it come into full effect that, hey, I might be a UFC fighter one day? What what were the steps you were taking to get that route, and how did that come about for you? That that was my dream, man. You know, that right now, that, that's probably every amateur's dream. I was like, man, I knew, I knew for a fact. You know, all the champions at the time or all the, you know, badasses were, were wrestlers, you know, coming right out of high school i was like you know what man i i'm a tough wrestler i wrestled for a long time yeah now let's try to put everything together you know find you know what methods are going to work for me yeah and i went through a couple things with the gym uh that i started training at it shut down but i was still able to go there and train but by myself there was no classes no nothing going on and um that's how i come to meet my now longtime trainer mac ramos uh, mm-hmm. he's of top notch Yep, and he's like, "What are you doing over here, man?" You know, I was like, "Man, I'm just training." You know, I, was, I don't know where else I can go. Yeah, he goes, "All right, well, Monday, you know, come over by me, check it out, you know, see if you like it." And it was just, it was so intense, man. From everything, the kickboxing, the conditioning, the boxing, the wrestling, I was like, "I'm like, oh yeah, this is it right here. This is my home now." Mm-hmm. And I've been there ever since, and since my first day in that gym, I knew that. uh you know, Mac and the guys there were going to take me to, to my final destination. Awesome. So let's talk about your amateur career. If, uh, if you had one, like, tell me about how that went down. Um, where were you fighting? What were you basically doing to grind to finally get noticed by the UFC to, to say, Hey, we might, we might give this guy a contract and have him fight for us. Where did, uh, where did that amateur route come into play getting picked up? Um, I had, Four amateur MMA fights. I went three and one as MMA fighter, mm-hmm. but I fought. I fought like three different weight classes. You know, one forty five, fifty five, and seventy. Yeah. You know, I, you know, I just really, it was just whoever could I can fight out. Especially fight. for amateurs, I mean, it, it, I and I work with some today that it's hard to even find a first off a, a very reputable organization or you know regional fight league um mm-hmm. finding quality opponents and finding opponents that will actually make weight because sometimes you think you're in a fight at 45 and guess what your fighter weight your opponent weighs in at 170 and so you're either s- stuck with fighting this dude or just scrapping the fight and not getting anything from it so yeah um That's- where uh Tell let, let's hear about that story of the first time you realized that you might have the opportunity to fight for UFC. When did that when did that come to fruition for you? So I uh right now I think my record's like twenty two and eleven right now. Mm-hmm. And about at I was like ten and nine at the time. Yeah. And I was like, 
understand what is going on here. I was like, I know just as good as everyone else knows that I'm not a 500 fighter. You know, I put too much time and too much work into into my craft and and that, and not to cut you off but that's why i wanted to have you on and that's why i didn't mean to pester you or try to you know get on get on your case about getting you on the podcast but i knew the type of fighter you were f- hearing about you and then following you throughout your career and understanding that sometimes the record never reflects the type of fighter that person is so that's why it was important to have mike santiago come to the go on it podcast because um, you embody what it means to go earn it, in my opinion, because it doesn't matter how many losses you take. It's a, it's a matter of how you get better from those losses and build off of it. Because I'll Absolutely. tell you what, uh, before you, I, like I said, I didn't mean to cut you off, but before you get on with the story, there's a reason why UFC still has you under contract. And there's a reason why they gave you an opportunity to fight in your hometown. So go on. Yeah, man, it's, it's, it's all about how you deal with the adversity. And that's and that's really what it comes down to, man. You, you know, you, you got to be down to come back, right? You know, say that a lot, you know. And it's always gonna get it's gonna get worse before it gets better. But no matter what, it's gonna get better for you sure. Know? Just keep on being persistent, and that's the key, man. You just keep pushing, keep grinding, and it will come. So, and, uh, how many? So, how many years ago um, did you realize uh, when? When was that year when you heard that USC had interest in you? And you're like, man, I I, I can show them what I'm made of. Uh, it's just a matter of getting out there and competing. When did that happen for you? So that happened. Like I said, I was I was my record was about ten and nine still mm-hmm. at the time, and um, I was talking to a manager, my manager Dan Rubenstein. Shout out to him, man. He, he helped me a lot um, to make my dreams really happen, man. And uh, he's like, hey, man, you know, and he, he said he believed in me when I was 10 and 9. He's like, you could have been in the big show at that. He's like, it's just your record, you know, it's not showing them much. Right. And I was like, all right, well, I'm just going to string together a bunch of fights, you know, month back to back to back. I'm going to win all of them, you know. And he's like, get to get to 5-0, and oh, you know, um, you know, your next five fights, he's like, and I'll make something happen. Right. And I did, man. I went, I went 10 and 0, 11 and 0. Yeah. 11 and 0 or 10 and 0 before I hit the contender series. Mm-hmm. Right. You no know, whites Tuesday night contender series. I went 10 and 0, but after five in a row, I was like, okay, what's up, man? You know, it's like, all right, just wait it out. And at me like being, having those five fights back to back to back, I wanted to stay active. I was like, nah, man, I'm not going to, no. I'm not going to wait. You know, I, I had opportunities knocking um, at uh, two different weight classes for uh, Hoosier Fight Club out here, Chicago base and Southside, Indiana and stuff. Yeah. So I, I won their 145 title. I was like, okay, cool. And then same thing. He's like, all right, man, just, just sit on that. Sit on that title, man. That's a good one to have. And uh, I won the Ring of Combat title out in uh, uh, East Coast and New Jersey, Atlantic City. And, you know, They've had over 100 fighters go to, to, the, to the big show, man. Oh, yeah, all big champ- time. Yeah, all their champions go. And I defended that belt a couple of times. Like, all right, man, just relax, bro, relax. You don't, <laughs> you don't need to take any more fights. And like I said, man, that's not me. That's you know, I'm not just going to sit around and I get I get anxious, bro. I get, you know, if I'm not doing anything or if right. I'm not training for a fight. And uh, I had another opportunity to fight for the 155 title for Hoosier Fight Club. And I was like, let's go. And so I went to training camp out in Colorado, a pro MMA, and came back, won that title. And I was like, okay, now I'll wait. Now I'll wait. Now 10 in a row, I was like, come on, man. I was like, if they can't do nothing with that. Like, you know, I don't know what, what else I got to do. Yeah. You know, like set me up fights week to week. I was like, I'll fight out there, <laughs> you know, just to get my name out there. It's, yeah. it's crazy fighting every week. But he's like, all right, well. He's like, uh, Dana White's got this show, you know, Tuesday Night Contender Series. He's like, just this one, he's like, you have to wait. You got to. Like, you have no choice. Do not fight. You know, be smart. Yeah. Like, all right. And I got the call for that. You know, five weeks later, boom, me and this guy, Mark Cherko, fought on the Contender Series show. I knocked him out in the first round. Didn't even get the contract. I was like, ugh. I'm like, man, are you serious, man? And like, I was down. I was down now, bro. After that, like, I had just won. Yeah, I was gonna say, like, at that point, like, you've done everything you possibly yeah. could to show yeah. that you're worthy, and they still 
just couldn't couldn't no. come up with something. You know, and I yeah, and that's what because all I was thinking about, and then you know my my guys that were out there, my trainer and you know Lamas, he was like he's like dude, he's like I know it sucks, you know you didn't get the contract, he's like but listen, you came out here and did exactly what you had to do. Yeah, you know they're like this is not going to be your last opportunity. Right. You know, I was thinking about that, you know, for, let let sink in for a little bit. And, you know, we're in Vegas, so we're just walking around and stuff. And I was like, all right, man, you know, cool, whatever. I'm out here. And I, like I said, they don't had to do, you know, if they didn't like it, then whatever. Yeah. And I, was, I, I had the only finish of the night, and I just didn't know what else they wanted. I was like, all right, mm-hmm. whatever. So that fight was on Tuesday. And I get home Wednesday afternoon. And then Thursday... I'm getting blown up at like three, four, five in the morning. I'm passed out, you know, I'm sleeping. Yeah, of course. <laughs> so I wake up, it's like five or six, you know, let's go to the washroom. And my girl's like, she's like, what, who's calling you? What's going on? Like, why has your phone been blowing up? I was like, I have no idea. What are you talking about? Yeah. It's my, my mom, all my boys, like, yo, yo, where you at? Where you at? I'm thinking worst case scenario, something happened. Yeah, somebody was, died or something. <laughs> yeah, something, something crazy. I was like, what the hell? Yeah. So I look at my trainer's text. He's like, wake up, wake up, motherfucker, wake up. You gotta go. Like, you gotta get up, cut this weight. We're in. We gotta go overseas this weekend. Let's go. And I was like, what the? And so I call him. Yeah. I'm like, dude, what are you talking about? He goes, wake up, dude. All you do is sleep. Wake up. I'm like, oh, <laughs> It's 6 a.m. You know, I, don't, I don't know what you want. Yeah. He goes, man, he's like, we're in. He's like, we got to go to Amsterdam. We're, you're fighting this. This is the guy you're fighting. I was like, all right. You know, I saw like one video on this guy. He's a beat. He's, you know, yeah. been tearing it up now. Yeah, he's beast, yeah. Yeah, so I think, I, I believe it was like eight days maybe from the Contender Series show to that fight. Yeah. So I only had a couple days at home. I had to get on the airplane as quick as I could and overseas it was like a, a whole day of travel man a whole yeah. it was crazy you know a weight cut was actually good because my body really didn't hold on to too much weight so yeah but still right. that that whole process of not only waiting your chance to finally get somewhere yeah. 10 fights later being on the contender series and then not seeing anything after that of course your confidence is gonna be like all right well i guess i'm back to square one and then yeah. you go for a whirlwind of events where guess what mike you're fighting this weekend at so and so so let's talk um let's talk about that because that's i think that's important to talk about this fight you had um overseas how did that go and tell listeners what do you experience from that with that event so Man, I I really didn't even have time to get nervous. That's how fast it happened. Yeah, you know, like it, it, the nerves didn't set in till I was like getting wrapped up and like putting my you know my all my Reebok stuff on. I was like, I'm like, damn, like okay, now this is for real. Like I got yeah. the gloves. On. Like I'm still like in uh, awestruck. I'm like, oh my god, like I got the UFC gloves on. Like damn, yeah. my dream. like this is crazy, you know and. uh I guess I fought Zabit, um, Mago Shapirov, and you know, like I said, he's a, he's an animal. He's doing his thing right now. Yeah. But I did fight, but I did fight him on short notice, mm-hmm. and I did not have a full training camp. Um, so, and I'll I'll save the I'll save it for the listeners, uh, just so you know. Uh, I don't know Mike too personally, but I know that he's not a man of excuses, and he would never use this as an excuse to say that oh, it's because of traveling and. <laughs> and all that jazz but you know we'll we'll have it be it as it may um going through what mike went through in a matter of a week's notice of time any ufc fighter whether you're number one contender or the champ a lot of people wouldn't do what mike did by taking that fight so he has to be committed win or lose yeah absolutely man and you know there's no way i'm saying no like oh hey you have an opportunity to fulfill your dream right do you want it no no i'm, I'm good no yeah I, I, just because yeah. it's not exactly uh fairy tale on your right. terms the way you wanted it to come out you got to take what you get exactly yeah it's there through through that i'm like yeah cool let's go i don't you care know. who he is whatever weight i don't you know whatever yeah and, uh, went out there I, I fought my heart out man you know and just didn't go my way that night you know 
Um, yeah. I got in the second round due to a choke. Yeah. But, uh, you know, I wouldn't have it go any other way, you know. I would have ha- loved to win, you know, but, man, two ho- uh, high-profile fights in, you know, a week, you know, eight days, I think that's that speaks for itself. I mean, there's there's fighters right now, and we, we, we'll get into that a little bit, but there's fighters right now that on a week's notice, they won't even dare to touch the phone and say, hey, I'll take that fight. No, you know, I know. Because you're at a point where – you're not really in a position to negotiate because you just got into the UFC as far as, you know, bragging rights and having the control of what your career is going to look like. Right. But most of the time you hear guys, they'll drop out of fights because it's too short of a notice. And for you to take that fight in that yeah. circumstance, it's it's one in a million that would do that, you know? Absolutely. I, I definitely agree with you. So uh, after after this fight with Sabit, um, how are you feeling? What was the mindset flying back? Obviously, you wanted the win, but you know that's just life. That you you've been through losses before. How did you recuperate and get back on the train? Yeah, um, man, I got right back in the gym like a couple of days after. Like, I I didn't stay. I my flight was like at four a.m., so I had to go to a hotel, get my stuff, and go right to the airport. Yeah, uh, from the hotel, and uh, I was, like I you know I was upset. Of course, you know it hurts my pride to lose. You know. Mm-hmm. especially like i said living my dream out you know in front of x amount of people overseas on the biggest stage you can be in yeah and i just couldn't pull it off and you know it was his night he was better that night than me and like I, like you said I, I have no excuse to to anything um got back in the gym that same week just just going through the motions letting my body kind of heal from the months that of these last you know those last 11 fights I was like, man, you know, my body just needs to, my God, I just need to rest. You yeah. Know? So I really wasn't training super hard, but I was just going through the motions, you know, mm-hmm. staying in the gym. Like, I, that's where I feel more com- most comfortable, man, in the gym every day. Like, that's, you know, it's my home away from home. For sure. Like, comfortable, whether I'm just sitting around training clients or, you know, even working on myself. And that's that's what I need to be. You know, yeah, that, that's a good segue into talking uh, more in depth about your team, Team Top Notch. Um, I had the chance to meet Mike when I was doing work with one of your other team top-notch fighters, Ronnie Hauser. I, I competed with Ronnie at UW-Whitewater in wrestling. Uh, we were friends in college, and when I found out that he was going to start fighting MMA, I had, uh, I had the fortunate opportunity to check out Team Top Notch, and um, I remember walking in, and I see Ronnie, and I was like, man, this is crazy. You're fighting MMA now, you know. I remember you just competing in a singlet like yesterday, and now you're you're about <laughs> to go in the cage and beat some some dudes up. And you know, I get to Team Top Notch, and it's you know, it's as MMA gym as cliche as you want to put it. I mean, it's a straight up gym, man. It's a garage. I mean, you, you open up that garage door, and it's it's straight up old school right. style training, you know. Yes, sir. And so uh, when I got to meet Ronnie over at Team Top Notch, um, it was cool because Ronnie's like, "Hey, check out uh, check out Mikey over there. He fights in UFC now." And I was like, "Oh, that name sounds familiar." But what I found cool about you was, uh, you know, you were quiet at first because I didn't have a chance to really speak with you. But the first thing I recognized was you were doing mitts with one of your clients or whatever, just working with her. Uh, I think her name's Amber or Amanda. And you're, oh, yeah, you up. and I, I still have videos that I'll put in this. Uh, I'll put in this uh, podcast. You're just throwing. You're holding mitts for her. And what I notice is like you really love taking that role of, you know, coaching people. Now, yeah. now tell me. Uh, let's talk a little bit about Team Top Notch. But tell me your role at that gym. Um, man, I just I, I do a little bit of everything at that gym, man. Yeah. You know, I, I want to take the role under my uh, the head trainer Mac Ramos. You know. Sure. I want him to be able to count on me for every, hey, um, okay, well, I'll do the stand up. He's like, after after class, hey, let's run these guys through MMA or let's get these guys drilled. You know, let's do this, let's do that. And I love to I love to help people, man. That's that's my thing for sure. You know, whether whether they think I'm a good coach or not, I'm gonna give you know them everything that I know. Yeah. You know, just to make them get better, especially if I know they're gonna fight. If I know. You know they have dreams like just like I do. You know we all start somewhere, right. and if I can help anyone, man, even if it's one person, then I'm doing my job. For sure. 
So what's it like? Uh, what's it like training with UFC fighters like Lamas? And tell me a little bit about that relationship you have with them, and um, even training with Ronnie and whatnot. Um, being yeah. able to train a young buck like him because he's up and he's an up and comer, and uh, oh, we nice. we like representing him for go earn it. And he's gonna be a, he's gonna be a beast as he grows into his career if he takes it where he wants it to go. Definitely, man. You know, I, I've been training with Lamas. Uh, since I started going to top notch when I was like 19. Yeah. And it all started with Mac. He was like, hey, uh, Rick is going to go to Miami. You're going with him. Oh, like, man. What? <laughs> I, was like, I was like, wait, what? I was like, what you... I was like, I don't even know him. Yeah. You know, I, I literally met him like twice before that. I just said, what's up to him? You know, like, oh, damn, what up, Lama? Was Rick in the UFC at the time? No, he was in the WEC. Okay, yeah. Yeah. He was, I think he was about maybe his second or third fight into the WEC yeah. when I met him. And, you know, after that trip to Miami, after that training camp, went through with boys, just, For you know, sure. best homies, you know, driving there, driving back, going through training camp together. He always says, uh, what do you say? Uh, misery loves company, you know? Yeah. So I was like, all right, cool, man. <laughs> Let's be miserable yeah. together. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, exactly. And yeah, like you said, Ronnie, man, he he he's a beast, man. He is so good, especially at wrestling, man. And he's been putting me through this stuff, straight wrestling practices, yeah. you know, a couple of days a week. It's just, and he's got the uh, these Elmhurst College guys coming out to help too. Yeah, to have him helping me and and all those other guys helping me with my wrestling, man. It's a, it's a blessing, bro. You know, for sure. And uh, Ronnie's been looking good, man. He's been looking real good in the gym you know his wrestling you can't you can't question his wrestling no man. not at all but um his stand-up is really coming along man he's been banging it out with some of these pro boxers in the gym and he's gonna be good man he's gonna be real good yeah it's exciting to see a guy like ronnie grow because you know um he has he had his up and ups and downs in college and going from whitewater to elmhurst but i think his transition just from Elmhurst to Team Top Notch really changed his mindset. The person that I knew him as a year ago compared to now, it's like night and day. And that's attested to the guys like you and Rick and um, your head trainers and whatnot. I could really tell that, you know, he, I mean, I, I think I saw him on a post Sunday. You guys were training on Sunday, you know, like just getting ready. And that that takes some type of dedication that not a lot of people are willing to do. So let's uh, let's talk a little bit about the mindset of Team Top Notch and what's it like training um, for a gym like that? You know, say I'm a uh, up and coming fighter that is looking for a gym and I want to give uh, Team Top Notch a, a look. What am I expecting out of it? Uh, hard work, man, and yeah. a lot of a lot of smack talk. You know? <laughs> yeah, a lot of it, man, and and that's the thing. Like, if we're not talking, if we're not talking to you, like talking smack to you then then you're like yeah i don't know if we're gonna if he's gonna fit in here but you know we we work we work hard man we work really really hard and yeah you know our losses don't come from being outworked no yeah you know, I'll that you know and like you said like sundays is our um designate like hardest wrestling day like i don't take any days off like uh today was my active rest day you know i ran i got a massage you know so right. I, I don't any days off and then to go on Sunday is just, he's like, all right, man, you know, I got some killers coming in uh, to work with you. You know, I got a big guy. I got a fast guy. I got any type of guy that, you know, you need. He's like, I got him and they're going to be here. And he's basically just been my wrestling coach this whole camp, you know, yeah. for as like two months, man, every Sunday just going in. All right, let's go. You know, it gets even to the point where I'm like, yo, dude, I'm like, I'm sloppy, man. I'm, you know, I, like, I don't know if I should do this next round. I'm not trying to get hurt. He goes, it's a dog fight. <laughs> yeah, it's a dog fight. He's like, I don't care. He's like, technique or not, he's like, you need to finish this last round. And I'm like, huh. I'm like, damn. Like, you know, I'm like, you know what? I'm going to listen to him because he knows what he's talking about. Yeah. And, you know, and, and we don't shy away from hard work, man. Right. We don't shy away from hard work. And if you work hard and if you come in and show us that you really want it, man, then, then we got your back 100%. Yeah, I think Ronnie, when I asked him the first question, I asked him when I first saw him at uh, Top Notch was, how was it your first day here? How, how did they accept you? He's like, 
dude, they threw me to the wolves right away. And they, they, they didn't have any mercy for me. They, they tested me right off the bat to see if I'm worth their time. And, uh, I passed fortunately, but I mean, he, he told me, he told me it's a grind to, to be uh, known as a team top knot team top notch member it it's not just a patty cake walk and you walk in sign up for a class and you're part of the team it's a brotherhood and it, it's a it's a tribe of people that take take it very serious and work very hard and you know if you don't like the way it's done you you're not accepted you know yes, man, you don't like it yeah for sure so now let's fast forward to Mike Santiago now uh you got the you got the news that you'll be fighting and probably the best scenario you you probably dreamt of this before you get yeah. to fight at the United Center uh, this summer. Tell me, uh, tell me how that came about, and tell me how the experience of living out your dream is coming to reality. Man, it's I, I like it's hard even to explain. You know the feeling like I even just talking about it, man. My heart starts pumping, bro. I get goosebumps. My my hair starts right. Get so excited. <laughs> you know it's. It's crazy. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, to be home, I mean, at the United Center, Chicago, like, that's, like, those two go hand in hand, you know? Yeah. And it's... You're going to be crazy. fighting where MJ, one of the, the GOAT, the GOAT yeah. played ba- basketball, you know? That's what I'm saying. It's you crazy. Know? It's it's so crazy. It's it's ridiculous. I'm like, man... And they don't come to Chicago often. No, no, so, I've been to... I went to the very first two events. Uh, I think mm-hmm. Rashad fought, like, Phil Davis, or I yeah. think it was Chael... And then I went to the second one, and I was just I was I'm such a MMA nerd and I'm a geek for it, and I was so hyped because it's going to a UFC event is nothing like anything you've ever experienced because you can go watch it on pay per view in your home and it's cool watching that experience, but I remember my first experience walking into the United Center and I can't tell this story enough. I'm standing there, I'm with my dad, and I'm like, all right, I'm about to walk into the the the, basically into the arena and my dad's tapped me on the shoulder and I'm like dad I'm trying to watch like leave me alone <laughs> and he's like fine you don't want to go say hi to John Jones then don't and I look over John Jones is standing right next to me no one notices and I'm like oh my gosh and, <laughs> but that that's how the event is everywhere you know and when you go to a UFC event there's fighters that are walking around just like normal people you know and yeah. that that's what it comes down to you're just a normal person just like me but right. you know we we hold such a high standard to guys like you because you're fighting for the biggest. This is this is the NFL. This is the MLB. This is NHL of MMA, and to be known yeah. for that is crazy. So tell me, tell me the the mindset of you being able to fight in your hometown, and tell tell the listeners what to expect, dude. Like. Uh... Yeah, it's it's crazy. I love it. My mindset's going in. I'm um, I'm going there guns a blazing. Yeah. And you know, I said and I know that I'm finishing this fight. Yeah. And it's and it's going to be for me. It's going to be for for me first, you know, cuz like you said, this is my this is one of my dreams, an all-time dream, you know. I'm going out there. I'm putting on for Chicago. I'm putting on for my team. I'm putting on for myself, my family, my friends, everyone. It's just going to be high energy fight, high pace, bunch of action. But I'm definitely finishing that fight for sure, man. And to be on the car with Lamas, who I've been training with since basically the beginning of my career, you know, that's that's another dream come true, man. Even for even for our trainer, man, I think that that's great for him. You know, I, I, I never even ask him how he feels, but I've been with around him so long that I can like feel his energy, you know. Yeah. Especially when me and Lamas are in the same room training together. And he yeah, man, it's it's surreal, man. It's, it's crazy to think too, uh, and we got a couple more minutes with Mike Santiago fighting this uh, this summer at the United Center uh, for the UFC. It's crazy to think that you started with Rick, and now you both are coming together right. out of this mysterious turn of events where you've been through your ups <laughs> and downs, and so is Rick too. I mean, Rick had a he he was on the come up. And then he f- faced some defeats with a couple of the top top end guys, and he's still grinding, and he, he's he's just right up there with everybody still. And yeah, his whole to, career. To see you two come back to your hometown and compete and fight on, in the same card 
it, I don't think that's a coincidence. I just think that was meant to happen, and it's just it's all coming yeah. into one big thing that's meant to be, you know? Yeah, the, the stars are aligned, man, and it's it's going to be a great night. Yeah, for sure. So when um, when it's all said and done, uh, how long do you think you're going to be fighting still? You know, it, do you have a – do you have a, I mean, a lot of fighters probably put a lot of thought into this. And then on the other aspect, they don't really think about it until they start losing or, you know, especially for a guy like yourself, you've been through losses that never yeah. stopped your drive to keep getting Absolutely. better and keep winning. Right. Um, has there ever come a thought in your mind that, all right, maybe at 35 or 40, I'm going to retire? Or is it more or less you going out on your terms? Yeah, it's going to be me going out on my terms for sure. Yeah. I've, I've been through wars. I've been through battles, and I've fought a lot of guys, and it, nothing has stopped me. And I, I can't let anything stop me. But once my body tells me, like I'll know. You know, there's there's even days of training, like like okay, we got, you know, I still got to do this at the end of the day. You know, I'll, let me go through these motions, and if my body tells me, like yo, relax a little bit, you know, take it a little slower, then you, you've been hitting it hard for six hours today already. Yeah. So, you know. Taper it down for a little bit. Don't get injured. You know, you just gotta listen to yourself and your body. And I think it, that's uh, that's what it's gonna come down to. But, you know, listening to my body. You know, if I get you know knock on wood any serious injuries, I've I've been uh, very fortunate. Like I've I've had you know a bunch of cuts on my face, but nothing too crazy, man. Mm -hmm. You know, nothing to uh, to stop me from from fighting and training every single day. You know. For sure. So as we sign off this podcast, Mike, thank you once again for being on the podcast. Uh, it's a long time coming, and I'm so glad that we got time to talk to you because I think ultimately you're one of those guys out there that embodies, you know, kind of what our brand's about. And so my last question, as always, as I sign off this Go Earn It podcast, Mike, when somebody says, Mike Santiago, you got to go earn it, what does Go Earn It mean to you? Gordon me is going out there and giving everything you have every single day, man. If, if you got a dream, go after it. Go go earn your dream. Go earn your right to call yourself one of the best in the world, you know, or whether it's competing against the best or just being the best version of yourself, you know? For sure. That, that's what I think it means, man. Awesome, Mike. Mike, where can listeners find you? Where can we watch you fight? When's the fight going down? Who are you fighting? Let's hear all about it. This is your time to tell the listeners where we can follow this journey and – uh, see you compete. Cool, man. Uh, June 9th, man. Yeah, United Center, Chicago, Illinois. It's a huge pay per view card. I'll be fight, fighting uh, Dan Ige. He's out of uh, out of Las Vegas. He's training out there now at the Performance Institute. Okay. And uh, yeah, man. Just, you can find me on uh, on Facebook, just Michael Santiago. That's my fan page. Mm -hmm. And on Twitter and Instagram is uh, M Santiago MMA. Awesome. And shout out to Team Top Notch. Give them a follow as well. Check them out. Um, Mike, thank you so much for your time. Um, as always, this is the Go Winner Podcast. Have a good one. Thanks, brother. I appreciate it, man. You have a good one. Thank you.